For any business that does bookkeeping, the first step of the bookkeeping process is when source documents are generated. By source documents, I'm talking about documents like receipts and invoices and so on. We discussed a bunch of source documents in our previous sessions. These source documents become the basis upon which journalizing is made. Journalizing is simply the process by which we post information to the journals. We discussed journals in our previous session. So that's more like the first step, you know. Mm -hmm. Source documents are generated, like receipts. Then these source documents become the basis for journalizing, that is posting information to the journals. Then from the journals, information is now posted to the ledger. So in today's session, we are going to discuss ledgers. Ledgers are made, mostly made up of several accounts. And definitely, we shall also be talking about what we mean by an account in a ledger. My name is Arnold Ranga Kuramia, and this is Kisemwaka. So there are basically three kinds of ledgers. We have what we call the general ledger. Then we have what we call the sales ledger, or call it the receivables ledger. Then also we have what we call the purchases ledger, or the payables ledger. So let me explain one by one. For starters, the ledger is an accounting book used to maintain proper records of business transactions. So let's go straight into the three kinds of ledgers. We have the general ledger, like I had mentioned earlier. The general ledger is simply a ledger that contains accounts relating to the owner of the business and other normal transactions. Then the sales ledger, or what we call the receivables ledger, is used to maintain personal accounts of all accounts receivable. And by accounts receivable, I'm talking about the debtors. Now, for those that don't appreciate the meaning of receivables or debtors, let me shed more light on this. If you own a shop and one of your customers comes to buy but they promise to pay at a later date, this means in your books of accounts that customer is considered a debtor. Debtors are considered assets and so are also considered accounts receivable. So away from that, let's now uh, look at what we mean by a purchases ledger or call it a payables ledger. A purchases ledger or a payables ledger is used to maintain the personal accounts of all accounts payable. Again, I'll use an illustration for those that are hearing these things for the first time. If you own a shop that sells merchandise and your suppliers give you goods on credit, it means you're supposed to pay back. And so in your books of accounts, this kind of pers person is recorded in your books as a creditor. And because you owe them money, creditors are also referred to as accounts payable because you are liable to pay them money for them having supplied goods to you on credit. From what I have talked about, you'll agree with me that I've already pointed out that these ledger books or these ledgers contain a series of accounts. So now we get to our next question. What is an account? An account, or you may call it a ledger account, is a place where all the information referring to a particular asset or liability or capital is recorded. An account has three parts. We have a title which describes whether it is an asset or a liability or an equity account. Um, we have uh, the left hand side of the account which is called the debit side. Then we have the right hand side. Uh, the right hand side is called the credit side. So from your screen you can see that the account is in form of the letter T. That is why ledger accounts are sometimes called T accounts. So if you are to look at the T account or this ledger account a bit closer, the debit and the credit side of this account contain this kind of information. Let's explore the information contained in an account in detail. This information is classified in terms of columns. So we have what we call the debt column. And definitely the debt column records the debt when the transaction took place. Then we have what we call the details or particulars column. In this details or particulars column, we record the information regarding the other account that has been affected in a transaction. As we continue, we are going to talk about what we call double entry. And when we are talking about double entry, there are always two accounts that are affected. So when we are trying to fill in the account, that bit, that part of the um, 
the details or the particulars column is where we, f f we write information about the second account that has been affected. We'll look at that a bit later. Then we have what we call the folio column. The folio column simply records the location of the other account where the double entry has been completed. And so this speeds up the process of finding the other account where the double entry has been completed. Then we have what we call the amounts column. We have an amounts column on the side of the debit. Then we have an amounts column on the credit side. And of course, the amounts, that is where we write the actual figure of the transaction. If you go and buy a hen and the hen costs you 10,000 shillings, the 10,000, the figure is written in the amounts column. Now, at the top of the amounts column, we normally put the unit of the currency that we are using in brackets. So if the amounts are in dollars, we shall write amounts in dollars at the top. And then, so that we do not have to keep writing the units of the, of the, uh, the currency repetitively throughout the column. So as I have been trying to introduce to you what I mean by an account, uh, I talked about the double entry. Double entry is a very important concept because it is the backbone of the accounting, the entire accounting process. In our upcoming sessions, I'll be talking about the double entry and we'll be starting with it from elementary and we shall go on expounding on it slowly till we complicate it, if I may use that word. Like this video if you like it, be sure to subscribe. Check out other awesome accounting videos on this channel. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next session. In any business that honors bookkeeping, when transactions take place, source documents are generated. For example, when you, when you pay money to... become the source of information for posting to the journals. Let me repeat this whole thing. For any serious business that does bookkeeping, when if... Ah, I need to close this door. My voice is going through. and this is Kisembo Academy. So there are basically three kinds of legends.